What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. Let's talk about it. What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. Let's talk about it. This is The Handmaid's Tale, season season four, episode one. All right, for those of you who are sort of new to my channel, I've been watching The Handmaid's Tale since the very first season. I love this show. This is one of my favorite shows. If you don't watch it, you need to go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you season one is like, what the... Season two is like, girl, this is hell, bitch. Like, what the hell are you got me watching? Season three, we get a little hope. And now season four, we in the revolution, okay? And one thing you ain't gonna do is enslave no white hoes. So baby, let's go ahead and get into it. The revolution will not be televised. So just to give you a little bit of context, at the end of season three, June had hooked up with these maids, these Marthas, and they got all these kids out of Gilead into Canada by putting them on a plane. Instead of getting on the plane herself, she decided to stay once again, like she did at the end of the second season, we was all pissed off, okay? <laughs> she decided to stay again. And she got shot subsequently when the police started chasing after them or the soldiers or whatever started chasing after them. And some Marthas rescued her. So this is, where, this is where we are. And we pick up exactly where we started off. So the revolution has begun. Shit is going down. Baby, it's, it's everything. Gilead about to be towed up in a minute, honey. Handmaids are nursing June back to hell. They're kind of like trying to stop the blood from the wound. And we see that Janine is still there with her. And they have to use this makeshift, I think it's a curling iron they use to solderize the wound so that they are able to travel. We see that they're in the back of a truck. They're like in the bottom part of in the back of the truck and then they, they're kind of tucked in and we see some soldiers come in, you know, to do an inspection at a checkpoint to walk around. And I thought for a second they was going to get caught because the homegirl was was making noise. You'd be like, bitch, shut your ass up. Shut up, girl. We're going to get caught, bitch. We're going to go back. To get, ain't nobody got time to be having no more damn babies. But they make it through the checkpoint and they make it to, well, at a certain point, the truck drops them off. Off, and they have to walk the rest of their way. Now up in Canada, if you remember last season, the commander Waterford and Serena, they kind of turned on each other in the end. And so she turned on him first and then he turned on her and they both arrested now. So they're in this fabulous prison. I mean, it's fabulous as hell y'all. So they're in this fabulous ass prison where apparently they can walk around freely. And the commander comes to see Serena. Yeah, she's smoking a cigarette. And um, he like, oh, you smoking cigarettes now? She like, mind your business. The American guy comes in, I can't remember his name, we'll get his name eventually, but he comes in and tells him that their hearing has been rescheduled. She was like, oh, oh now you're trying to thwart my rights? Oh, now you worried about rights? Now you worried about rights, Serena? You worried about rights? Okay, he says. He tells them he's gonna let them know, you know, when they reschedule the hearing, and then he tells them about the plane that arrived with 86 children on it and some handmaids and Martha's and Serena's like what the fuck huh what you mean he's like they're safe everybody's good you know what I'm saying? she's like oh my god they're poor families now she's speaking of the families in Gilead in which these children were taken from but we all know that that's not them damn people kids in the first place okay he was like um they being reunited with their families as we speak Commander Waterford is like, this is going to start a war. You need to return these kids back to their homes. And he says, well, that would want nothing more than to return them back to their homes. But you destroyed them. Okay. You destroyed their homes. He says, and I think um, you might know somebody who was involved. It was a handmaid. Her name is June. Wasn't she your handmaid? And Serena is like, you dirty low down. Yes, she did. Our girl June suited up with plot armor, okay? Because can't nothing happen to June. Nothing has got all them children out. And I know you feel some type of way. Be mad. Be mad about it, honey. And June is still at large. Waterford says they're going to find her and they're going to kill her in Gilead. And Serena's like, may, may God show her mercy. Girl, Gilead ain't, they ain't got nothing for June, okay? Well, June done made it through four seasons. She done been beat up, raped, slapped, shot, everything you could think of. And she's still alive. She's not going to die. You know why she's not going to die? Because she's the star of the show. You got us fucked up. 
okay we see the ladies walking through the woods they're looking for this safe house and apparently the safe house is supposed to have a lantern and the girls are like we can't see the house you know can you see the lantern bitch i can't see no lantern. you see a lantern hole and june is like of course you know june volunteers i will go forth the hoe can barely stand up she can <laughs> barely walk y'all but june is walking forward and she sees this man come out of the house and he has a lantern he asks her if she's okay and he says i thought there were going to be more she raises her hand and as soon as he says are you okay and he tells her that she's safe she passes out she wakes up once again the ladies are nursing her back to health um and she says that this girl the mistress of the house which is a young girl she looked like she know more than 14 or 15 years old she's telling her oh my god i had dreams of you you know i had dreams that we was killing people together you know and this girl um ends up being somebody interesting okay <laughs> to say the least okay so i was like girl god i don't know I don't know if God made you dream that girl. Maybe you just was in a bad situation. So now we back in Gilead, okay? Aunt Lydia still looking like somebody beat the shit out of her ass, okay? She's sitting there talking with the council and they tell her that she will not be disciplined for her actions. But, you know, the kids were taken under her charge and they said they considered her frailty. And, you know, Aunt Lydia is pissed. She don't like nobody calling her frail. She don't like nobody saying, hey, you know, this is your fault. Everything has happened. So they tell her to return to work and as she's getting up to leave the man says those handmaids they're nothing but sinful whores and see Aunt Lydia ain't like that. And although we thought she was going to redeem herself she took 10 more steps down to hell you know they were led astray by a liar and basically it was y'all job to catch her y'all let her go you know it's been 19 days and y'all haven't been able to find her she's out there right now planning who knows what against us Pray, gentlemen, and find her. And when you find her, bring her to me because this frail woman will sleep better at night. I said, uh-oh, Aunt Lydia is on a war path, honey. She called her Delilah. I said, oh, my Lord. We've seen June wakes up and she's going through an inner monologue. She's still in pain. She's talking about how her body was an instrument. You know, it, it worked at her will and it obeys her commands. And now she, there's tending to be done to her body. They make penicillin. You know, she has to rub herself with these special ointments and whatnot. She had a dream that she was talking to Hannah and she almost died. And um, today she ventures forth because she ain't got time to sleep. Basically, they got to get their shit popping and rolling, okay? She ain't got time to be, you know, laying up in the bed for no months. Because Gilead isn't afraid. Gilead going to keep coming for them forever, forever, ever, forever, ever. She walks out. Everyone seems happy to see her awake. We see that Janine is playing with this pig. I think she named the pig Charlie or something. And you know, she just as happy as the clam, honey. And she goes out to see Alma, Alma, Alba. And anyway, she's, Alba is the lookout. So she says on a clear day, they can see five to six miles away. She talks about her wounds and how, you know, she oozing pus and all this kind of stuff. She was like, but other than that, you know what I'm saying? I'm good. You know what I mean? I'm ready to get back out. This is going to be good. You know, it's whatever. She back. So she takes the binoculars and she begins to look out. And I feel like they have a lot of foreshadowing moments that are going to come to us in this. Just from watching The Handmaid's Tale, her looking out like that and seeing what the terrain was. I feel like at some point in the series, it's going to come back like really quick. Back inside, she hears some thumping around and she walks in there and she sees Commander Keys. Now, Commander Keys is the man of the house. and He doesn't even acknowledge her that she speaks to him. And... Then she goes outside or she goes somewhere else and she sees the young girl, the mistress of the house. She greets her and the girl is smoking a cigarette. And she's basically like, girl, what we gonna do? You know what I'm saying, bitch? I know you just got out the bed. You can barely walk. You can barely talk. You can barely breathe, bitch. But what we gonna do? Like, who we gonna kill first? What's up? Do they have drones? And she was like, well, the drones will be too high for us to see. She's like, but they could see us. I mean, she is out here war strategizing and planning, Miss Honey. And she just looks at her. June just looks at her and is like, wow, you're so young. Like, you shouldn't have to take on all of this burden at such a young age. And this seems to piss the young lady off. And she's like, hell, you, you supposed to be Mayday. We supposed to do something. You know what I'm saying? If you wasn't going to come here and do nothing, I don't even know why you came. You should just let them catch you. And she got up and walked away. Now, me... Being an educator, I know that young teens, they go through a lot of angst. So instead of saying, I'm upset, I thought I was going to be a child soldier and we were going to go away and we we're going to battle Gilead and I want revenge for everything that's happened to me, she kind of takes it out on her and throws a little temper tantrum. Then, like I said, back in Gilead, Nick is going to visit Commander Lawrence. Y'all remember Commander Lawrence and he thanks him for his service. He thanks him for his service over and over again. And Commander Lawrence like, y'all come, y'all gonna kill me. So that's why you keep saying it, because y'all gonna kill me, right? Y'all gonna kill me. He will. He said he will receive some more information 
invasion tomorrow. And he was like, well, what about the invasion? He said, I haven't had any orders to do an invasion. And so then he talks about, you know, um, millions of people may die. You know, if they could work out some type of diplomatic plan to maybe give these people back or give these children up. You know what I'm saying? They can possibly work out something with the UN. And, you know, you, you can negotiate that. That's your leverage. Basically saying, go to them and, you know, try to work it out for me. I don't want to die, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I can help y'all. And then as Nick is leaving, he says, this is June's legacy. What do you want it to be? And he like, I'm going to thank you for your service because you about to give up. I'm thank you for your service. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Bye. I'm back at the ranch. Janine is um, standing with the pig because they're about to slaughter the pig and she kind of prays with the pig. I feel like Janine is, would be a vegan or a vegetarian. You know, she don't believe in slaughtering the animals and eating the animals, right? So we see June has the, I mean, by the mistress and the guards, they walk out and, you know, they leave and they go and kill the pig because they got to eat, honey. The ladies are eating. They're having a blast eating dinner. And then the mistress is pissed when she sees that Janine doesn't want to eat. So she kind of puts her on blast. Girl, I felt like I was I was watching somebody be online for sorority. <laughs> the way she was talking to this girl. And she makes her eat a piece of the pig. And Janine is just so upset. She cries and she like tries to hold her mouth. June, well, she runs out of the room and June stops her and is like, hey, you know, they have brutalized all these girls. They brutalize everybody. Like, have some respect. Don't do that. I was glad that June ran behind her and kind of got her together. Like, girl, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, I'm going to need for you to relax. She tells her to show some compassion too, which I thought was nice that she could finally say that. That can be verbalized out loud because how many times have you watched this show and you want to scream at the TV, bitch, have some compassion. Y'all out here all worried people and beating people and killing people. Like, you just want to say, have some compassion and some respect. So I'm so glad that the words were actually spoken on the show. The girl begins to tell the story of what happened to her. Basically, Commander Keys couldn't get it up. Okay, he couldn't get it moving when they first got married. So instead of him having to impregnate her, he was inviting guardians, eyes, um, officers, everybody to come through and be with this girl, right? And R word her. June this kind of turns into a mother figure and tells her, hey, this is not your fault. I believe that God is just and those men are going to pay for what they did. So the girl had a knife the whole time they were talking. So the girl gives her the knife and she and June hangs the knife back up. And then she runs out to go find Alma again. And she's like, hey, you, we got a crazy bitch up in here, unstable ass girl up in here that need to be tended to, ho. And you running out here. What the hell are you doing? And she was like, girl, we free, girl. We is free. And she was like, we are not free. What are you talking about? Like, look around, bitch. We are not free she's like well maybe this is the best we're ever gonna get maybe we need to make the most of it and so then she walks into this hall and she sees everybody dancing and having fun we see two men dancing together two women dancing together it was just like you know like kind of like before all this happened not kind of like 25 percent okay <laughs> But they're having a good time. Although June wants to be happy for that moment, you can tell that she understands that this moment is fleeting. These people are going to find them eventually and they're going to hang all their ass from their wall. Okay, so something got to be done. They can't get too comfortable. So then we see the guards coming down the next morning to get Commander Lawrence and they bring him to this room, which kind of looks like a torture chamber. But then Nick comes into the room and he tells them that he has convinced the council to take him on as a consultant. So he just came down there to get a shave and to clean himself up. So he's going to help them strategize, you know, this war, this invasion, this diplomatic exchange that's supposedly going to happen. So I was like, boy, that privilege, honey, that, that male privilege, not even just white privilege, that male privilege is prevalent all up and through Gilead in the way they treated Commander Lawrence, which literally took her to freedom and drop her off and the baby. Okay. And then the way Aunt Lydia gets treated when she was responsible or she was there when all these girls were taken. It's amazing, okay? It's amazing, so amazing. Mm -hmm. June sees Commander Keys again. She picks up the knife this time, and this time he starts talking to her. So he apologizes that he can't remember her name, and she introduces herself as the Martha. And he says, there's another young lady that's living around here. You know, I can't remember her name either. He's talking about his wife, and she, he doesn't even know her name. So you can tell that he has dementia, Alzheimer's, something of that nature, right? And her name is Esther. And he's like, oh, my gosh, she's such a pretty girl. And you can see that this is just tearing June up because they done R-worded the shit out of this girl. And, you know, June is pissed. You know, she don't like no violence against no children, honey. He tells her that he's scared of her sometimes. And she was like, you should be. And an officer interrupts. Um, you know, she puts the knife down. An officer interrupts and says that Commander Keys is needed outside. 
So a truck comes up with the man, and this is the man who was trespassing, you know, wandering around in the woods, some type of guardian officer, whatever the case may be, and he was drunk. He was trying to come up there to mess with that girl. Basically, that's what it was. And June walks up in there, and she's like, you know, is this one of the men? And Esther is like, yeah, that's one of the men. You know what I'm saying? That they used to mess with me or whatever. It looks like they're about to shoot him right there. Or the men say, we'll take him to the river and, and deal with him or whatever. And, they, and he gets away. He runs away. And the girls start chasing him. And they start beating him down or whatever. And then June is like, stop. Bring him to the barn. So everybody's like, you know, he saw us, girl. He saw everybody here. So you know what we're going to have to do. You know we're going to have to kill this nigga. I mean, I'm just saying. He's like hung up on the thing. And so she goes to him. And this like look comes over her face. And I promise you, it was like Aunt Lydia karaoke. Okay? Like, <laughs> she was like... Her family sent her here to be R-worded over and over again. And you are a traitor against the United States of America. And you R-worded a child repeatedly. And the punishment for that is death. Then she gives Esther the knife. And she tells her, we are made that you was right. Okay, we need to fight. This is a way to galvanize the ladies and let them know, hey, don't get too comfortable. There's a lot of stuff going on. You guys need to pay attention and um, not get too settled in this life, right? Because people are coming every day. So she tells, she gives her the knife and she tells her, make me proud. I was like, girl, if you ain't Aunt Lydia <laughs> right now, June, like... This was, you remember that season June was going off unhinged and we was like, girl, what are you doing, June? But it's like that again. You don't know if she's a villain or the hero child. I don't know. He turns around and walked away and Esther stabs the dog out this man and I was happy. I ain't gonna lie because he deserved it. June goes back to her room, baby. She breaking down. Like I said, the bitch could barely talk, walk. She breathed. So she getting in the bed and she lays down and Natural Woman is playing in the background. And I just love the music for this show. It's everything. Esther then comes back into the room with blood all over her face, over her clothes. And she lays behind her and tells her that I love you. And she says, I love you too, Banana. And she smiles. If y'all know that, she called her daughter Hannah Banana. So... Baby, it was a good episode. It's not, not, I know it's two more episodes on there that I'm going to go watch. I've been watching Snowfall for a few days. Um, and I still haven't watched 911, but I'm going to give you all of that stuff before this, before the weekend is over with. Okay. So bear with me. I know I'm taking all day. I know it's just a lot going on, baby. I thought this episode was excellent. Like I said, if you don't watch The Handmaid's Tale, baby, you late. You tired and you late. It's, it's been like two years almost, 20 months. Since we have seen the last episode of season three. So I can understand if you haven't figured it out that you need to watch it. But it is on Hulu. It comes out every new episode. They come out on Wednesdays. And I think they released like one, two, three episodes at the same time. Okay. So um, it was great show. I want to hear your thoughts about The Handmaid's Tale. Don't forget to like. Oh, and shout out to my new subscribers, y'all. We have hit the 3,000 subscriber mark. Like a little bit more than 3,000 subscribers. So you know what I'm saying? Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Welcome to the channel. I talk real loud. Turn your microphone down. I be singing the shit. You know what I mean? I just be talking. If I say something wrong, go ahead and correct me. If I forgot something about this episode that you want to talk about, go ahead and put that in the comments. All right? So... I'm going to holler at y'all next week. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with all your friends. And I will holler at y'all next week.